what the Italians would refer to as incalmo. It's a decorative technique that really got a, a lot of use back in the, the 1950s and the, the mid-1900s. It is still used quite a bit nowadays by artists all around the world. And it's just a nice way to create pattern. So I'm just getting those attached. I'm going to get that all cleanly fused. Now the tendency when you uh, attach a couple of bubbles like this is that the seam gets thicker than the rest of the, the wall. So I'm going to get that all fused in and then I'll take the glass out of the flame and I'll blow in pretty firmly to get the seam to stretch so it won't be thicker than the rest. And a nice uniform wall thickness. how it's glowing very closely. It's the glow of the glass that tells me how hot and therefore how soft the glass actually is. And it also tells me how uniformly heated and softened the glass is. I want a nice uniform medium shade of orange from one end of the blue section to the other and all around the circumference. As the glass gets to the right temperature, I'll take it out of the flame and start blowing in to inflate it. And when I first start, I'm going to blow really gently. And the glass will be very hot and soft at that point. So I'll be blowing almost like I'm just whispering into the tube. Really soft. But as I continue blowing, the glass will be out of the flame. So it'll get colder and stiffer pretty quickly. So I will continue to blow harder and harder. But as I get to a point where I'm blowing about as hard as I would to blow out a candle, I never blow any harder than that. If I need more air pressure at that point, I reheat the glass, soften it back up, and then just start blowing gently again. All right, this looks pretty good. Out of the flame, under control, and blow gently. to the diameter of that blue area. So soften this up and inflate right in the midsection. So flame working is really just a style of glass blowing where we use a very focused heat source. So rather than a big furnace, we use a torch. This torch is running on natural gas and oxygen. When I turn the gases up as high as they can go, the flame temperature gets up around 4,000 Fahrenheit. This is pretty close to that, maybe a little below 4,000. Go ahead and inflate this a bit more. degrees, pretty outrageous temperature, but uh, believe it or not, I'm still perfectly comfortable back here. There's so much oxygen pushing its way through the torch that it really helps to focus the heat. So the heat stays pretty well contained within the flame, and it's getting pushed away from me the whole time as well, so it's a lot more comfortable than it sounds when you just hear the flame temperature. Another thing that tends to surprise folks if they haven't seen flame working before is the fact that we melt the same piece of glass that we're holding and we hold the glass with bare hands. The glass is a very poor conductor of temperature, so it just doesn't conduct the heat 
to where my hands are. And I really need my dexterity for this stuff. So the idea of wearing gloves doesn't work very well. You don't have the control you need. So I'm trying to incorporate a little more of the, the clear that's further to the right of what I've been inflating into the rest of the form. Now, I'm not going to use all of this clear glass. I'll end up cutting this uh, a little short. So I do need to incorporate a little more of that. Like the right size tumbler. I made another one in my 11 o'clock demo session. I want this to match pretty closely. Now, typically when I'm really concerned with getting things to match just right, I'll, I'll take measurements and I'll have uh, several sets of calipers on the, the bench top. But these are, are not uh, production items, so they don't need to match exactly. So we're just sort of going by eye. shape the blue side a bit more. I want to make it lower and wider. So as the glass softens up, to make it lower and wider, I'm going to start to squeeze my hands closer together, and I'll turn a bit faster. That combination of the squeezing and centripetal force from turning faster change the shape. I'm going to get this little puff of air as well. Pretty specific shape for my tumblers. I think they fit the hand really nicely with just the right form. in segments. If it were all one color, or, or all clear for that matter, I wouldn't have to work it in sections quite so much. But uh, the different glasses move a little differently. They, they have different viscosities. So I really have to sort of work them in, in segments this way when I combine them with the colors. To create colored glass, Different metal oxides and chlorides are, are melted together with the ingredients for clear glass. And once all those ingredients are, are at the right temperature for the right amount of time, there's a, a chemical reaction that occurs, and we wind up with colored glass. And since they do have different ingredients, different colored glasses have some, some different characteristics to them, some different working characteristics. Uh, I mentioned they, they can have different viscosities. Uh, in the case of these glasses here, the blue is a lot stiffer than the clear. She just doesn't want to move quite as much at the same temperature, so that's a concern. Some colored glasses, if you don't heat them just right in the right part of the flame and the flame isn't set just right, they actually start to boil and bubble. So there are there's some things to get used to with the, the different colors. All right, that's looking pretty good. My next step, I want to do as much shaping to the bottom of the form as I can right now, while I still have these two points, these two, two nice straight handles on here. 
The very last step in the process will be removing the point that's in my left hand from the bottom of the form. And as I get to that step, I'll be holding the, the piece with a tool that holds it pretty well, but it's not nearly as good a grip as what I have right now. So I want to try to do as much of the shaping as I possibly can get away with right now. So I make that last step in the process as easy as possible for myself. fairly flat. I've got a very narrow diameter to the, the point where it meets the bottom, so I'll be able to melt through that very easily and quickly. So now it's time to open the top of the form. And to do that, I'm going to cut the tube open using the flame and air pressure, but I'm not going to blow in to create air pressure. I'm going to create air pressure by heating air that's trapped inside of the tube. So I've set a, a pretty sharp, hot flame here. I'm going to focus the flame where I want this to cut. And since it's a fairly narrow flame, it's just going to soften a narrow band of material. As it does, I'm going to start to pull my hands apart, which is going to make that glass thinner and thinner. Well, eventually the glass will get so thin and I'll build so much air pressure inside of the tube from that hot air expanding that it's going to just pop the tube open. So, it's starting to soften. Pulling my hands apart gently. It's getting thinner. Thinner. Fold the glass onto itself to seal it off. It builds pressure and pops open. Now, I want to get that lip nice and crisp and straight here. And I want to flare it open a bit more. Let's put the jacks back on here. The jacks are made of steel. As steel and most other metals heat up, they tend to stick to molten glass. So I've got a little bit of beeswax to my right side and uh, I coat the blades of the jacks with the beeswax. That works as lubrication. This keeps everything sliding along. So just getting that lip nice and crisp. And I'm gonna flare it a little bit wider. flames and smoke you see that's just from the beeswax glass doesn't combust as it gets hotter it just gets softer just want to remove the, the point from the bottom. I need to grab onto the top of the form to do that and it is way too hot to grab with my hands so I've got another helpful extension of my hands here. We call this a claw holder. As I finish, I need to make sure that the glass cools slowly and evenly. You do that with an oven. 
we call that process annealing. It'll remove any residual stress from the glass getting heated and cooled unevenly. So before it goes in the oven, I do want to make sure this is going to stand properly on the table. So just getting that point melted off. Shape up the bottom a bit here. I also want to indent the bottom just a little bit. I'll do that with gravity as I come out of the flame here. So just soften the bottom. Sink in. Properly. Well, that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go ahead and place this in the oven, make sure it's going to cool properly. And if you guys have any questions for me, once I get this settled in the oven and safe, I can come out of the booth be happy to answer any questions you might have. So if you do have some questions, stick around. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your visit here today. Thanks for coming out to see us. Thank you.